be a slow grudge match, but both of these teams are also capable of shooting the ball at a high clip, and it could go down the wire with a high, high scoring game. Underway here from Charlotte again, final game of the day. Campbell in their black uniforms here tonight. Gardner Webb in the whites. Clemens fires in and out. Clemens in this last game did not get a lot of opportunities to score the ball, and he averages around 10 points a game and just couldn't really get the ball in the basket, and a lot of that was a testament to Presby, who gave everything they had in that game. And it's not quite a minute in. We'll have our first foul. That's going to go against Zion Williams for Gardner Webb. Let's get to our starting lineups presented by Sunbelt Rentals for Campbell. Ricky Clemens, Jordan Whitfield in one of the two buzzer beaters in the night, Austin McCullough. Jesus Carolero and Cedric Henderson. Fella almost tied up, tries to get rid of it, throws it out of bounds, and we'll go back the other way to Gardner Webb. And that's something that Gardner Webb does is they make you play, you know, to your second level of offense, which is all right. Maybe the the stagger screen wasn't there, so now I've got to do a ball screen action, and then you've got to do a baseline drift and things that you you practice, but. It's your third option. You see the starting lineups for Gardner Webb, Terry Williams, Zion Williams, Kareem Reed, and Dufial. And the starting lineups presented by Sunbell Rentals. Carolero underneath and forces it in. He had 14 points, 13 rebounds against Presbyterian two nights ago. Talked about Carolero being that quarterback of their offense, the one that really makes it makes it hard to guard the majority of firepower on this offense. Offensive rebound. Another possession here for the Bulldogs. Nice pass to Reed. But wave off the bucket. And a foul underneath. That's what makes Campbell so pesky. You think that you have that straight line drive, and then all of a sudden Clemens comes over, takes that charge. Really makes you have to second guess yourself when you're trying to get in the lane against a team like Campbell. Campbell 16 and 12 overall this season, 8 and 8 in conference play. Lost two straights and three of four to end the regular season, but again, found some magic in the first round two nights ago in that win. Of a Presbyterian. Long three pointer, two short. Dufiol with the rebound. Here come the Bulldogs back the other way. Lance Terry's got it, feeds it to the post. Lance Terry, eighth in the league in scoring, 14 points per game, as well as DeMorian Williams. So a couple of guys for Gardner Webb that can really fill it up. Anderson to the other end, and an offensive foul. See it, another opportunity. He's not going to get easy, anything easy against either one of these teams. They really put a ton of pressure on offenses to play the game the right way, or you better have contingencies because if you don't, they're going to make you pay. Here's Williams, stops a little bit too short. Rebound down to Campbell. Trying to go to McCullough back door and out of bounds. Last touch by Gardner Webb, so Campbell's going to keep it. You see Campbell trying to pick up where they left off in their last game, just running their motion offense where they pass and cut based on who's being overplayed. Carolero gives it up to Whitfield. Now back to Carolero. Tied up, dives for it, gets it back. Fights for the ball back. And McCullough, long shots. That one misses. Now 
Here's Selden. And that one a little bit too short. Great save, though, by Dufiol. Selden again. Shot clock down to five here for Gardner Webb. Williams to the baseline, fadeaway jumper, tough shot. And that's what Williams does. He can hit tough shot. He's a three level scorer. Can really get going once he sees the ball go in the basket that first time. Here's Henderson. He had a big game against Presbyterian. That one short off the front of the iron. Tie game at two over four minutes in. And so far, this is exactly what we expected. This could end up being a huge defensive battle. The top two defensive teams in the league. Selden behind the back. And try Webb to one and done on the boards, but also create second chance points. And for Gardner Webb, you have to dictate percentages on defense, really try to drive. Uh, Campbell off of that three-point line because they're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the Big South and stay balanced on offense and continue to run your sets until you get the shot that you like and then control the paint with your size and athleticism because they have that in their personnel. Kick out into the corner, wide open shot for Selden and just gets it to slide in off the front of the rim. That was all started by Terry, who was able to get into the paint by off, off of that catch, throwing the defense off by thinking that the closeout was going to be at the three-point line, but he was already moving and shifting into the paint, so he was already there. Sucks in the defense, and now Campbell's at a disadvantage at numbers. Stachic double-teamed inside. And a possession arrow will give it back to the Bulldogs on the tie-up. Reed did a really good job of the double team and getting hands on the ball before Stasha could get himself in any type of rhythm or momentum. Issue with the clock there, so whistle while they fix that. Tim Kraft, night season as the head coach for Gardner Webb, assistant at Auburn and East Carolina before taking the Gardner Webb job. It's also an assistant at Gardner Webb back in the early 2000s. Coach Kraft is a winner. He's done a really good job of, you know, taking the head of this program and really turning it into something special where it gives always Gardner Webb a chance to have a shot at going deep into the postseason. Yeah, just to put his career into perspective, he is only the eighth Big South coach in conference history to win 150 or more games. Henderson gives it up to Clemens. Now back to Stachic. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Thompson in the corner trying to drive baseline. Nowhere to go. Shot clock down to two. Thompson with one. Fires too strong. And Williams with the rebound. That was a great defensive possession for Gardner Webb. Ooh, great fake by Reed. Way to finish with strength there. Great pass from Sears, skips it into Reed with the strong move. I love Reed's game. He's very skilled for his size. Great motor, great length, and great athleticism. And now Reed with the rebound. Williams draws three defenders, tries to go to Reed, fumbles it. Now battle for it again as Campbell comes away with it. You can see a lot of those loose ball battles between both of those teams. Those are those little things, those intangibles that you got to win in order to come out of this game with a victory. Stachic from the exact point that he won the game two nights ago. Yeah. Is that, is that his 11th three of the year? He was three for ten from three-point range going into the game two nights ago. He said, I've got it. I saw him making those shots in warm-ups, and I said, he's trying to do something here. And Gardner-Webb answers on the other end. That's what we talked about, Williams being so special. He can score in a myriad of different ways. 
at the basket, mid-range and from three. So to your point now, Stocic now with as many three-pointers in the last two games as he had all year. Two in the game on Wednesday night, and now this one early here. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> this guy's picking up right where he left off. Terry muscles it in, and Gardner-Webb now with a 7-0 lead. Gardner-Webb has a ton of offensive weapons. Terry, who is a shooter, can really fill it up. You got Williams, who can shoot the ball and get downhill. And Seldon, who can also get busy once he gets going downhill. I mean, they've got a great balanced group on offense here. Henderson, step back. Tough shot. It was a league shot right there for Henderson, who is really, really came up with some big, big points in that game a couple of days ago when his team really needed it, when it was starting to look bleak for Campbell. There's Selden into the corner to Terry. Shot clock again down to nine. Williams pulls the trigger and gets it to go in. Gardner-Webb now with three three-pointers. And that's the thing. Gardner-Webb, is they, can, they average around 70 points a game. Even though they're very good defensively, they can really run off a ton of points quickly. Campbell trying to hang in there. That one missed by Clemens. Now turnover. Sears is looking for Reed. Reed was looking for it. Anderson short on the three. And now Sears just going to slow things. Yeah. He fit the criteria. And he's going to get a rest here with 10-18 to play. Midway through the first half. Gardner Webb by eight. Bulldogs have reached the semifinals in two of the last three years. Trying to do it again as Lance Terry gets it to fall in. Terry shooting about 41% from that three-point line. It's very efficient once it releases his hands. Four three-pointers early for the Bulldogs. And a foul on Gardner-Webb here. Foul on Julian Samaro, freshman from the Bronx in New York. Gardner Weather, you see the record on the screen, 11 and 5 during conference play. Really good season again. Won 8 of 10 to finish the regular season. They're just consistent, and they always give themselves a chance in these games because of their ability to defend. But Henderson is not going to let that be easy for Gardner Webb. Only losses they had down the stretch were to USC Upstate on the road and to Winthrop. It's tough to beat uh, USC Upstate in the GB Hodge Center. Henderson with the handoff to Thompson. Stachic thought about it. Henderson's going to take it. Too short. A collision between Alexander and Carolero. And the foul on Carolero. First one. We talked about when Carolero got in that foul trouble in that first game that we called. You could see the significant difference of impact offensively as far as Campbell getting the rhythm because of Carolero being such a, he's kind of like a point forward for Campbell that can, right. you know, creates off of all those backpacks that are going down. There is Carolero, number 12 in black there for Campbell. Drives in the lane, kicks it out into the corner. Whitfield looking for his first bucket, and he gets it. How about Whitfield the other night? 16 points against Presbyterian. Again, the biggest shot he hit was in overtime to tie the game at the buzzer and force it to double overtime. But he was, I mean, just such a huge part of that win and really hit big shots down the stretch. And another three now by the Bulldogs. That is a tough, tough shot from Jordan Sears, who stepped right into that off of help side defense, over helping a little bit too much and giving him that opportunity. 
Gardner Webb five for nine from three point range. Henderson behind the back dribble, can't get it to fall. Reed back into the game. Sears 21 to 11. Gardner Webb eight of 16 from the field. Big thing is the five three pointers. Meanwhile, for Campbell, just one of nine from three point range. See Gardner Webb putting a soft press on Campbell just to make them have to ease some time off the clock. They haven't even gotten to their offense yet, and it's 10 seconds to go. Whitfield has it knocked away. Sears trying to lob it up top and deflect it out of bounds. And that's what Gardner Webb does. They'll throw several different defensive options at Campbell to make them uncomfortable the entire game so that they're never just used to one set of defenses. It's got to be a multiple different ones that continue to make them have to think and do each possession. Dufiel from the corner off the backboard gets it back though. Kicks it out to Terry. Spins out, Selden, big offensive rebound. That one won't go. And Campbell finally comes down with it. Those are several opportunities that Gardner Webb had and just couldn't put it into the basket. Here's Lusain. And the jumper good by Carolero. Carolero really just understanding that the defense was playing off of him, giving him enough space to really see that daylight he needed to knock it down. And all that does is that puts pressure on the defense to make them have to adjust to him. Terry spins in the lane. Spun one way, didn't like it, went back the other way, and a little hook shot with the right hand. And that's the thing, you, you know, when you got Lance Terry and you've got Williams in your backcourt that really put a lot of pressure on your primary guards to really have to defend for 30 seconds each possession. It's tough to guard those guys. Carolero trying to do the same thing, leaves it short. Here's Terry again, he has seven points already. Leaves it for Selden. Sears drives a little bit too strong. Campbell down nine. Whitfield can't get it to go. Nice rebound by Sears. Only 5'11", but leaping into the air to grab it. Contact. Terry, that's going to be a blocking foul against Campbell. It's going to go on Jordan Whitfield. Shot of a pause. Referee was definitely trying to make a great decision here. Yeah, Whitfield still moving and trying to beat him to the spot, but didn't beat him there. Whitfield picks up his first. Kevin McGeehan, ninth season as the head coach at Campbell. He's almost lost it. Able to find a little bit of help. And Henderson with the rebound. Campbell has put together a few stops now. Carolero kicks it out of the corner. Henderson too short. And the three is just not going for Campbell. Offensive rebound, though. And a foul on Gardner Webb. But Campbell is still finding ways, even though the shot's not falling. They really have been crashing hard. And when they have, they've been able to create a couple of more opportunities for themselves to get back in this game and put the ball in the basket. Four offensive rebounds, to your point. Trying to get some extra possessions. Henderson to the free throw line. Finished just out of the top 10 of the conference in scoring this season. 14.1 points per game. Really had a great year. Honorable mention all conference. 
you know, two-time all-conference in his career. Thompson back in. A lot of that is because Henderson has been the primary scorer for Campbell for years. But what that does is on those scout reports, those defenses now hone in on you. And you can either be selfish and keep shooting tough shots, or you can trust your teammates and get them involved. And what you're now seeing is, you know, him maturing as a senior and getting his teammates involved and giving them opportunities to win the game because they have balanced scoring on this team. Thompson gives it up to Carolero, and that went way off target. You can see as soon as it left his hand, it kind of went off the side of his right hand. Yeah, he definitely was not in a rhythm to shoot the shot like he made the first one that he had taken. That was a rhythm shot for him. This one, he was more surprised that he was open, was thinking about passing it, but at the last minute decided to shoot it. Campbell, two for 13 from three-point range. Here to start this game. Terry again, quick spin. Just missed it. Carolero with another rebound. Whitfield. Foul underneath. Able to sneak it to Carolero, but a foul on Lance Terry. Great find from Whitfield there. Create opportunities there. First foul on Lance. Terry Campbell hanging in there. 3.37 left in the first half. Gardner Webb by seven. The Gardner Webb Bulldogs out of Boiling Springs, North Carolina. Bringing some fans here. Boy, this, having this tournament in Charlotte, I mean, as a player, you were in this conference. This has got to be a great city to be able to host the Big South tournament. Yeah, we didn't get this opportunity when we were playing you know about 10 years ago but it was still a great environment because you know fans were coming from all over to support their teams and and the institution and so uh, it always makes for good basketball when you can come to a neutral site and uh, it kind of creates that that thrill for a lot of the fans as well as the players and to have this proximity too to where they can actually get here yeah yeah everybody can get here yep Woodfield kicks it out to Clemens Trapped on the baseline. Seven seconds on the shot clock to Stocic. Reads on him. Stocic over the top of him. Can't get it to go. Sears hauls down the rebound for the Bulldogs. That's a great defense from Reed. Just staying vertical and not biting on, you know, the hesitation and fakes from Stocic, who could have drawn a foul easily. Reed underneath can't get it to go. Both teams have gone scoreless now for over three minutes. A lot of defensive stalemates here, but that's what both of these teams focus on as their staple. Again, the top two scoring defenses in the league. Whitfield tries to get it to go, can't do it. Henderson the follow. That won't go. And a foul on Campbell. It's going to go on Henderson. And we talked about it before is Campbell trying to make sure that they are the aggressor on the rebounds trying to hunt for a second chance opportunities because you know that when you play against a guard and a web they're going to make you take tough shots but because they're rotating so hard there's usually an opportunity to get a, a offensive rebound on the weak side Henderson goes to the bench with two fouls that's tough because Henderson was one of those players that was Putting the ball in the basket from time to time there. Campbell forces the turnover. I thought Stashis was about to start the break, and I was like, not only is, yeah, there was no intent there to try to hurt anyone. It was just. And the big word you know, that we heard, because uh, we had this situation a couple times the other day, it was excessive. Yeah. You know, that was that's what the officials were telling us. Jumper from the baseline. That one won't go. Uh, you're seeing Campbell throw up a defensive hiccup at Gardner Webb, throwing a matchup zone at him and rushing people at him and make him put the ball on the deck and take a low percentage shot. Whitfield tries to throw it back. They're going to say last touch by Terry, so Campbell's going to keep it. 148 left to play. 
Again, this is just one of those games, right? I mean, it feels like Gardner-Webb has been dominating this game. It does, it does. But at the same time, you know, Campbell finds ways to stick around. They're resilient, they're old, and they, they've been around the block a few times where they've been down and they don't panic in those types of situations. Gardner-Webb won for their last 10. Campbell won for their last nine. You think it's defense? I was going to say it's exactly what you said <laughs> it was going to be. Stocic gives it to Clemens. Five seconds on the shot clock to Thompson. Long three off the iron. Under 90 seconds to play first half. Sears racing around. Foul on Campbell. It's going to go against Thompson. That'll be his first. Sears puts a lot of pressure on, on a lot of defenders because he's so quick. And Thompson's a quick guard as well, but Sears has got quickness, he's got strength, and he uses that to his ability. And even though he's a small guard, he's got to be strong to be able to ward off bigger, bigger defenders usually. Terry trying to penetrate, they collapse on him. And now a steal by McCullough to the other end, lays it in, and we've got a three-point game. Yeah, McCullough did a really good job of getting that deflection first. He got a little tip. And then was able to continue to go downhill and get that layup. Sears, nice bounce pass across the lane to Diffial. Knocked out of bounds and a foul on Thompson. That'll be his second now. You see, it starts with defense. McCullough able to get a little tip there. Get out in the open floor. Finish. Ludovic Dufial at the free throw line. There's McCullough. Tied a shoe. Ten points, five rebounds against Presbyterian. Do you think that's a Wiley veteran move? I haven't seen that before. Right now he's got to tie the other one. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more time. You never did that, did you? Mm -hmm. No. Three points lead. And it stays at three as Dufiel misses the first one. We'll never know if McCullough meant it. Definitely worked. It did. Dufial misses two, and now Campbell can make this a one point game, maybe even tie it. Gardner Webb's largest lead of the half was 11. You're just saying now, Campbell just settled down and get into more of an offensive rhythm. Clemens, nice catch, trapped underneath, and walked with it. Clemens 0 for 2 so far in this one. You just see it. Gardner Webb, they swarm so quick and create a bee's nest where you. Oh, yeah. You just don't feel comfortable ever. A five seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And 10 seconds left in the shot clock. Sears just dribbling it out. Williams from the elbow. No good. Three seconds left now for Campbell to Thompson. And lays it in. It's outskirts. Yeah. I said it twice. All right, underway here in the second half, our final game of the day here in the quarterfinals. And right away, 10 seconds in. And it's going to be a foul on Gardner Webb. And by his expression, yeah, Lance Terry picks up the foul. Ten seconds in. And for Terry, that's his second. Yeah, Whitfield being the wily veteran that he is, really sold that, that foul. Whitfield behind the back. Carolero kicks it out to Clemens. Shot clock down to five. Whitfield hangs, had it deflected. Short. And so uh, 
trying to make a run this this tournament. Well, for one of these two teams, the streak is going to continue after tonight. The problem is for the winner of this game, who comes up next? <laughs> the the uh, defending back-to-back -back defending champions. Reed. Well, he was our strong move back in the first half, and another one right here. And that's what we were talking about with the touch for Reed, for Reed there. Just stayed balanced, took the bump, and still finished the shot strong. As much as he affects the basketball game, that strong move back in the first in the bucket here is only two of the game so far. Whitfield runs into trouble, flips it out to Clemens. Five seconds on the shot clock, and Whitfield loses out of bounds. You know, I'm not sure that pass really put Whitfield in a very good place to be successful. It did not. But we'll talk about Reed really just taking advantage of that mismatch attack, and Carolero finishing with the left. And Williams with the drive and the score. Zion Williams. We've got DeMorian Williams and Zion Williams who play a lot. Zion averaging seven points per game and now a five-point lead for Gardner-Webb. Zion Williams is definitely uh, one of those guards that can really put a ton of pressure on the defense when he gets him downhill in the paint. Carolero against Reed, and Reed gets the block. Bulldogs running out. Williams trapped in the air. That's got to be an offensive foul, yeah. Oh, yeah. They saw Williams fully extend that arm. He didn't play a lot in that first half, and I think a lot of that was because foul trouble. That was, you know, we've had a lot that have been really close. It's a tough call to make, like we've talked about all week. That one is more, you know, in true essence of the of the rule when you see that extension, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's an easy call. Sometimes you can get away with the chicken wing because it stays, you know, completely bent. But when you fully extend like that and it doesn't look like a trick chicken wing, it looks like a drumstick, it's a foul. It's an offensive foul. Whitfield with another bucket. He has four points. Three-point lead. Gardner-Webb, if you're just tuning in, Bulldogs led by as many as 11 back in the first half. DeMorian Williams has it blocked. Reed right there puts it in. That's what happens when you put a ton of pressure by getting downhill into the paint and drawing a secondary defender. If you don't sink and seal, that weak side is wide open, and Reed definitely took advantage of that. Woodfield, long shot, a two-pointer rattles it in. It's a tough shot. Lance Terry was all over and had a hand in Whitfield's face, and sometimes it's just nothing you can do when you got a kid like Whitfield that can score it. Turnover. Three on three back the other way. Campbell. Looking to tie this one up, but Whitfield has it go over the rim and into the hands of the Bulldogs. Williams again. It's a big screen from Reed. And now Terry, and that's an offensive foul. And now Terry picks up his third. And Whitfield does a fantastic job of just understanding how the offense is coming at him. And he feels that shoulder drop and he sells it. Wiley Sr. there. I mean, there's just two dead giveaways, and we've seen it all week. Yeah. One is the extension like we were just talking about. The other is just that exaggerated dip of the shoulder. Yeah, and here's the thing. Whitfield recognized that. And even though, I mean, he's a strong kid. It's not going to fly that far. But, you know, when you get hit like that, you got to sell it. And uh, he flew back. <laughs> it's clever. 11 turnovers now for Gardner-Webb. Up by three. Williams trying to go back door to Terry. Picked up, though, by Dufial, who scores. Great hands. Great awareness from Dufial to see it and put it in the basket. Henderson takes it. 
Nice tip out. Yeah, so I, I played against Campbell when the, they had that dark gym. It's real dark. And They've got a beautiful facility. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, but they beat us like a drum at the house. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, where are the fans? They were there, but I just couldn't see them. <laughs> it's like somebody was just talking trash to you, and you didn't know who was saying it. You wanted to say, say it in my face. Diffial able to grab it, put it back up. Stocic upset to foul on Campbell. A lot of frustration there on Stocic there. Foul on Thompson for Campbell. That's going to be his third. McCullough, one of the seniors on the squad. You know, this is something that we talked about on Wednesday night in that game against Presbyterian when Campbell was having to come back. You know, this is a senior-laden squad. I mean, by definition, right? Yeah. They went eight and eight in conference play. Really, I mean, underachieved as far as you know, the expectations that the media had, the coaches had, the yeah. fans had, yeah. the players had. But these are dangerous teams this time of year, right? I mean, when you've got Absolutely. four or five senior starters and last time on the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, they are definitely dangerous teams because of you know the experience and they've been in the moment and that's the difference between them versus young teams uh, that may jump on them at their house or something like that while they're on the road and also scheduling makes a huge difference and catching people or teams when they are on runs or or win streaks and things of that nature and so you get everybody's best hit especially when you are veterans but one thing that they all have experienced better than most teams around is is this tournament and so they know how to win. That's really the separator between them and their game last uh, two nights ago against was it Hampton, right? So when they saw them, or was it Hampton? Was it Presbyterian? Presbyterian. Presbyterian. When they saw Presbyterian, Presbyterian's young. They hadn't been there before. And so the moment Absolutely. was a little too big for them. And so uh, that's, a, that's a good game. But if it was on a, if it was maybe at Presbyterian, Presbyterian comes out with that win. It's one of the big factors you would think that's going to keep Campbell in this game. Despite the fact that Gardner Webb is so good defensively, can score as well, fourth in the conference and scoring as well. And another foul is going to be whistled against Campbell. I think it's Cedric Henderson, it looks like. Starting to add up a little bit for Campbell. Yep, you're right. That's his third. Yeah, so Henderson with three and Thompson with three. Williams trying to feel something out in the middle, nowhere to go. Kicks it out to Sears. He drives, hangs, beautiful. Laying with the left hand by Jordan Sears. And that was a great seal from Dufiao, too. You know, let that lane available for Sears to keep, keep going downhill and finish strong. Henderson down the lane, off the glass. Good touch by Henderson on the other end. Henderson always has an answer when his team needs the ball to go into the basket, whether it's hitting that tough shot. He hit a tough one against Presbyterian. Made it really, really difficult for Presbyterian to continue to advance in the lead. Backside rebound by Zion Williams and the putback. Zion Williams has definitely been more active in this half. Five-point game, second half of our final matchup here in the quarterfinals. Winner of this game will take on Winthrop in the semis. Stocic lost it, seven seconds in the shot clock. Whitfield step back, long three, almost banked it in. Streaking and Selden just can't get it to fall. He's really picking up. Henderson, 4-3. Selden is down. He's been down this entire possession that Campbell had. Selden, the true sixth man of this basketball team. I think it may have been the ankle. Looked like that's what he was grabbing.
two-point game, just under 13 minutes left to go. Henderson with 11 points. Let's look at it again here. Ooh. Yeah, that right leg. And he was feeling it on his way up. So much pressure, right? Yeah. And so I mean, much it's a, it's a very, momentum. Yeah, it's a, it's a move where he put a lot of power in, into that lift. And that foot kind of went outward. Normally, you, you twist it, you know, inside, but that one kind of went, or twisted outside, but this time he did the opposite. Point against Selden. Just three points on the stat sheet, but I mean, he means so much more to oh, that yeah. for this team, as you well know, and also had three rebounds. Again, he's the true sixth man of this squad. Played in all 29 games, made one start, averages eight points, and five rebounds per game. Provides a ton of energy for this team. And back to play. A two-point game. Williams rattles in the three. DeMorian Williams again averaging over 14 points per game. Tenth in the conference. And he has 11 now. What a tough shot for Williams. Campbell was definitely making a little run there. McCullough down to Stachic against Reed. Five in the shot clock. Stachic slips. And a traveling violation on the big man. Yeah, he seemed upset about it, but it did. It just looked like he buckled there. You know, just contact, but yeah, he slipped. Man lifted the pivot foot. Yeah, lifted that pivot foot. That's a travel, definitely. He probably thought that he kept it down. Yeah, maybe, but I thought that other foot kind of rolled out of bounds. Yeah, that too. There's Terry. Into the lane, a little floater. Nice touch by Lance Terry. He has three fouls, so he's got to be careful, but just a great drive, a stop, and just floated it right in. And that was great, great ball movement, and just staying balanced and making the defense have to shift continuously so that you have some angles to get downhill. Whitfield answers on the other end. You know what? We might make it to 50. They picked it up a little bit. They have here the second half, for sure. Gardner-Webb, 8 for 13 here in the second half. And Campbell, 5 for 10. Good start here about the midway point. Williams spins against Carolero. Can't get it to drop. Stachich with the rebound. Clemens has been quiet again, just two points so far. He's definitely trying to facilitate and get guys involved, but in order to put pressure on the defense, he's got to show his ability to shoot that ball. Stachich, you see it. It's creating offensive opportunities for him now at the free throw line. It actually did. You see it, too. It looks good coming out of his hands. 11 points, two three-pointers, in just 16 minutes of work against Presbyterian in that huge win two nights ago. Stachich woke up. Threw some water on his face, looked himself in the mirror and said, today, you're a shooter. <laughs> and he's made it a three-point game. Sears, started by Whitfield, gets it away to Williams. Now gets it back, open for three. This is off to the right, and Stachich with the rebound. Henderson gets a screen from Stachich and now drives to the bucket, leaves it a little bit short off the left side. Good ball movement here by Gardner Webb. Zion Williams 
trying to push his way through a couple of players ends up traveling with it. Well, he saw a little bit of space there, but it was like an elevator door just closed on him. Well, they just took that away from him. That's a testament again to Campbell's defense and how they can tighten things up really quickly and make it look like, give the illusion that you may be open for a quick second, but they just take up space so quickly. Zion's been a big part of Gardner-Webb here just recently. He's had 14 points in two of the last three games, so he's really come alive. He's active. He's always looking and hunting to try to get an opportunity to get downhill. He didn't want to come out of this game, but went to the bench. Here's Terry. Spin, stops, a little bit short, tips it to himself to keep it alive, and a foul on Campbell. What an effort play by Lance Terry. Yeah, he definitely, he missed that shot, but, you know, tried to fight to get himself another opportunity where at least he could have possession. There's Zion on the bench. And he has three fouls, probably one of the reasons why he's headed over there. There's Terry again. Seven seconds on the shot clock for Sears against Whitfield. Puts it up with four, almost got it to go. Tip, offensive rebound, and the putback by Dufial. And that's what we talked about. That was a solid defense possession for Campbell where they did everything except for solidify the ball and control it. Where Gardner-Webb got themselves another opportunity to score the ball. We talked about before, it's going to come down to the little things, those second chance points, those loose balls like we're seeing right there, those being available in the gap actions, closing out with your hands up. All those little things play the part there. Staying active there, Dufial. Dufial with four points, seven rebounds. He's worked really hard for those four points. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but there's been limited opportunities to score in this game as is. Campbell just three for 18 from three-point range. Terry again, great touch, scores. And Gardner-Webb now with a 44 to 37 lead. Terry has great touch around the rim. He's a shooter, but also can score in that paint area, especially against smaller defenders. Whitfield answers on the other end, keeping Campbell close. Whitfield saying, you can, you can knock down floaters too, hold my alkaline water. Whitfield now double figures with 10. Henderson with 11. A help side defender in Dufial actually got away with that earlier with a Sears drive where he sealed his, his man so Sears could get all the way to the lane. Pressure defense by Gardner-Webb. And Whitfield, little runner in the lane. Hold and it. Whitfield now with 12. As a little guy, as a little guard, you always have to have that floater in your bag. So you're not going up against bigs in the paint and trying to finish into their body. You save your body from that. You know what else you have to have in your bag? Tray ball. That. That tray ball right there. Terry's got two of them. 14 points here tonight. And Whitfield crashing into the lane. It's bailed on the foul on Gardner Webb. And the Bulldog fans unhappy. Just great chase action. Terry was able to get his feet set. Shoulder square, knock down that three. You see how the game is going. I mean, every point counts here. Terry is 6 for 12 from the field. Two three-pointers. Again, 14 points on the night and three rebounds. And the first one goes for Whitfield. Whitfield now with 13 points. He's 6 of 12 from the field. 
And can't get that one to bounce in. Five-point game coming up on seven minutes left to play. Sears back to Terry. Whistle and a foul against Campbell. And this is going to be is that Thompson? underneath. They got Clemens this okay. time. Okay. It's going to be his second. Carter Webb inbounds. Finds Williams. Up and under move. No good. Rebound down to Campbell. Down five. Here is number five. Too short. That was a big basket that Campbell really needed to start to edge away at this small lead that Gardner Webb has worked really hard to get a hold of. Zion Williams with it back in the game. He's swinging around to Williams. Now to Sears. Along the baseline, Henderson with the steal. Whitfield hits the three-pointer. It's a big three for Whitfield, and all that started with Campbell creating the turnover, getting a stop, and then getting out in the open floor before Gardner-Webb's defense can get down the floor. Knock down a big three there. Williams trying to answer. No good, out of bounds. Last touch, though, by Campbell. Two-point game. You see the stop. It starts with the active hands by Henderson there, getting out in the open floor and just giving it to their shooter, Whitfield, who does what he has to do to try to continue to eat away at that lead. Five seconds on the shot clock for the Bulldogs. Williams with one second left. Missed it, tipped out. Here comes Thompson. Waiting for some help. Thompson got down there quickly. Step back, long three for the lead, no good. And that's one of those situations where you probably want to, I know you don't want to go against half court, but you probably want to settle it down and uh, run some offense against Gardner Webb and make sure that you guarantee yourself a good high percentage shot to tie or take the lead of this game. Clock winds down under five. Whitfield from deep off the rim. Whitfield 16 points. Just one of seven, though, from three-point range. He had a slow shooting game against Presbyterian, too, but got hot when it was needed. Sears stops. Scoop shots, no, out of bounds. That's great defense from Clemens, too, and not biting on any of the fakes and really making it difficult for Sears to get a high percentage shot there. Last touch by Campbell, so Gardner-Webb is going to keep it. Gardner-Webb has not scored now in a little over three minutes. Reed is checked back in. He's got it. Hands it off to Sears. Shot clock down to five. Into the lane. Can't get the bounce. Reed there with the offensive rebound, but stripped away and a foul, I think, against Sears. Yeah, it was. Trying to pick it away. Yeah, absolutely. And Thompson, being that pesky guard, um, really did a good job of swiping down and getting the ball out of Reed's hands, who Probably would have been a guaranteed layup um, because Reed did a good job of being on that weak side once help came over to get it and try to create an offensive possession. Sears picks up his third, by the way, as Thompson rolls it in. Every bit of the rim there. I like Thompson's confidence. He's really tried to beat extra aggressive in this half. Rattles that one in, and we are tied at 47 
Just over four minutes left to play, and now the Gardner Webb fans coming alive. Underneath to Reed, reverse layup. And Reed is the difference maker in this game. Right now, you got Carolero on him, but Carolero is not a uh, post player. He is a, a forward. And so Reed is a, a true center that can definitely impact the game, as you see there. Bucket on one end, block on the other. Two point lead in the basketball. Here's Sears across the stripe. Williams looking for Reed. Can't find him. Well defended by Carolero. Five seconds on the shot clock. Sears, sweet spin move and the finish. What a fantastic finish for Sears there. Really just breaking down Thompson, who is a elite. 3-11 left to play. You just said during the break, Campbell's not done yet. I don't think so. I mean, they've been in these situations before. It looked a little bleak against Presbyterian, and they found a way. See if they can find some magic again like they pulled off just 48 hours ago with Whitfield and Stocic. Whitfield has it poked away. Quick hands by Sears to the other end, and he has it taken away by Thompson. Back to Thompson, 4-3. No good. Clemens had a hand on it, and he gets fouled. I think Sears did something pretty bad to his ankle. He's having trouble putting pressure on that foot. And that'll bring us to another break. From here in Charlotte, this one not done yet. 2.40 left to play. In case you missed it just 48 hours ago, Campbell down at the wire, Whitfield to force double overtime. And if that wasn't dramatic enough, Whitfield again in trouble, able to find Stocic. He hits the three, and Campbell goes on to win it to get into the quarterfinals here tonight. And they're going to need some heroics in a little bit if they can't get things clicking offensively, where they're going to need some big shots. Take a look at our Hercules tire game summary. Campbell last led back in the first half when the game first started. But they've been in there the whole time. Oh, yeah, they've, they've definitely trailed the majority of this game, but they've still stayed within striking distance. At one point, Gardner-Webb made a big run to take an 11-point lead, but that was way back in the first half. Yeah, early in the first half. Yep. Ever since then, it seems like the lead has been around four or five points. Back and forth. Went back to two now, coming up on two and a half to play. Zion Williams in the corner, guarded by McCullough. Sears drives, looking for something, nowhere to go. Shot clock down to seven. They go to Reed, who turned his ankle in the lane. Oh, and Reed is hurt underneath the basket. Yeah, that is no good. There's a lot of shoes around him and things of that nature. He definitely went down. Tough situation for Gardner Webb. You hope he's okay because of the impact that he has created for this team as far as creating second chances and opportunities. And keep in mind, it's Selden who went down earlier. Absolutely. We haven't seen him return. No, he went down bad too. Watch it again here. Right when he comes down. Oh, right on the foot of Clemens. Oh, yeah. Like you said, there was a lot of shoes around there. Yeah, I knew he landed on the foot. I didn't see it, but I figured that's what happened. So they look at Reed on the sidelines. Gardner Webb back to work. Shot clock at 10. Down two of their main contributing players now. 
Terry off the front of the iron. Zion Williams with the offensive rebound and a new possession here for Gardner-Webb. And that's big. We talked about it before, the loose balls, the, the opportunities, the little things that it takes to close out games against two teams that really focus on defense. Zion turns down the three, drives, and scores! The five-point lead, just over 90 seconds left. The winner goes into the semifinals to take on Winthrop. That pass was right at the feet of Carolero. And a tie-up possession is going to give it to the Bulldogs. And you see, all it takes is, you know, a pass too low or one mishap and be a change in possessions immediately. Huge possession here for Gardner-Webb. Sears gives it to Williams. Coming up on a minute left to play. Sears into the lane, stops on a dime, and can't get it to fall in. That could be huge under a minute left. Clemens. Campbell trying to stay alive, just like they did the other night. Whitfield, hang foul. That was a smart play for Whitfield to not settle for the three, but to get downhill and try to draw a foul and see if he can get an and one situation. More higher percentage actions happen when you get the ball to the middle of the floor. Foul on Dufial, that's going to be his third. Huge free throws for Whitfield, makes the first. It's a four-point game. Whitfield, 17 points. Seven of 14 from the field. And hits them both to make it a three-point game. We got both teams in 50 now. It's big. To the top, Webb with the lead and the basketball. I'd attack Cedric Henderson. That four fouls. They try to go across the lane. Zion Williams picks it up, throws it in, but a foul first that's going to go against Clemens. Third on Clemens. Yeah. A little contact there on the catch there. Clemens trying to jump that lane. Looked like he uh, hurt that shoulder too. Yeah, took a shot there from Williams. So Zion Williams now to the free throw line. Just 54% on the season. And the first one is short, barely catches the front of the iron. Three point game, 30 seconds left. Thompson gives it to Whitfield, the hero from 48 hours ago. Drives, reverse layup is no good. A couple of bodies hit the floor and a foul. It's going to go against Dufial, and he wasn't real happy with the call. Is that his fifth or third? Third, yeah. They, they've been spreading them out pretty good. Okay. Terry with three, Sears with three. Actually, that's four. Okay. For Dufial. Yeah, I knew he was getting up there at that point. Zion Williams a three. Whitfield just hit two a moment ago, and this one will not go off the back of the... One more here for Whitfield. And swished it to make it a two-point game. Williams off the foot of Carolero. Actually, two whistles. Officials want to talk it over. Oh, I think they're talking about the clock and it being a kicked ball. 
So they, yeah, are taking away the shot clock. Wow. Was it? Was it oh, they're saying, the, okay, the clock is already gone. I'm not sure what they were talking about. I thought they were looking at the clock. They try to sneak it in. Carolero had a hand on it. And Thompson picks it up and calls a timeout. Got 11 seconds to make something happen. You what saw the desperation. Way. You saw it right there. The desperation in Campbell really making it difficult for Gardner-Webb to even play the ball. Thompson right there, sprints in, grabs it, and calls a timeout. Terry. Seventeen turnovers on Gardner Webb, and that last one obviously huge. It gives it back to Campbell with 11 seconds left to play and a two point game. Boy, and here we go again, partners. We just saw just two nights ago. Yeah, yeah, and listen, Campbell is used to this at this point. There we go. Down to eight seconds left. Clemens drives, can't get it to go. Put back is missed. Ball is loose. And the clock eight. Here we go. Clemens gets it into Whitfield. And it's blocked at the buzzer, but a foul. Oh my. Foul on Lance Terry. And the clock right now says point one. Oh, wow. And Lance Terry saying that Whitfield kicked that foot out. Kevin McGeehan, the head coach for Campbell, <laughs> said, hey, are we still alive? Here it is again. Yeah, that's a two. Yeah, feet were on the line. There's the contact. Can't see the clock. But yeah. Here you can see the clock as well. Yep, for sure the foul. Yeah. And free throws now for Jordan Whitfield. If you're just tuning in, two nights ago, this man right here, number 11, hit a shot at the buzzer in the first overtime to force a second overtime that Campbell went on to win. And here he is again with two free throws, a chance to send this one into overtime. And the first one is good. Oh, man. This is gonna be tough, man. Potentially for overtime. And he missed it off the front of the iron. 